previous lesson, we've talked about the different methods in which we can solve a quadratic equation. Or another way of saying that is finding the roots or the zeros or the x-intercepts or even the solutions. In this lesson, we're going to look at ways in which if we're given the roots, how can we come up with the equation of the quadratic? Here's an example of what I mean to start us off. Find the equation in standard form if we know the roots of a quadratic are 4 and 2. Knowing that there are several ways in which we can show a quadratic equation, standard form, vertex form, and factored form, the one form that gives us the roots is factored form. So let's use that form to start with, and then we'll work our way into making it standard form. Factored form looks like this, y equals a times x minus r bracket x minus s, where r and s are simply the roots of the quadratic. So this question gives us what the roots are. It says the roots are 4 and 2. Let's also remember that when reading factored form, we can read the roots by looking at the r and s values but knowing that it's backwards thinking as to what they read. So if we see a, an x minus 5 in brackets, that means that one of the roots will be positive 5. So if our roots are 4 and 2, positive 4 and positive 2, inside the brackets then we should see negative signs. So we're going to write this out here as a bracket x, another x here, and we'll fill in our roots, one being 4, the other being 2, and then also remembering that these must be negative or subtract signs. This is the proper way to read the roots. So this is our equation in factored form. If we wanted this in standard form, we'd have to expand out. So we can foil these brackets here. So keep that a out here for now. And we'll foil the brackets. So x times x is x squared. And we'll have a minus 2x, a minus 4x, and a plus 8 and then collecting all of these like terms and simplifying a bracket x squared minus 6x plus 8 and our final step here is to expand this a through the bracket so we end up with ax squared minus 6ax right a times 6x is 6ax and then plus 8a this looks like a pretty normal quadratic other than the a value being spread out through here. We don't know what this a value is and unfortunately we don't have enough information given to us in order to solve for this a value. So this is as far as we can go. In order for us to be able to simplify this further we're going to need some more information. In that last example we only were given the roots. We weren't told the vertex or any other points, so it wasn't clear what the exact equation would end up being. But we're going to look at an example now where we're given the roots plus one other point that lies on our parabola. So let's determine the equation of a quadratic function that has roots of 2 and negative 2, and we also know that it goes through the point 0, 3. Again, let's set up our equation, and I'll use function notation here. So f at x equals a bracket x minus r x minus s. And because we know our two roots here of 2 and negative 2, we'll put those into our brackets right away. So a bracket x positive 2 will be a minus 2, and the minus 2 root will look like plus 2 in the brackets. So you can write them in whatever order. And now we're left with um, sort of where we were ended up last time. But with this added information of this point 0, 3 being in or on our quadratic, we can use that to help us now solve for a. I'm going to substitute a y here for f at x because we know that those are interchangeable. Knowing that the point 0, 3 lies on our parabola allows us to substitute 0 in for where we see x and 3 into where we see y and then you'll notice that the a is the only variable left which means that we can solve for it. So let's make those substitutions. Uh, y value is going to equal 3, so 3 
we have our remaining equation here. So a bracket, right, the two brackets here. We have a minus 2, a plus 2. And then where we see these x's, we're going to throw in our value of 0. So 0 in for x there. And another x has also a value of 0. So 3 equals a bracket. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 0 plus 2 is positive 2. And what we have here are two numbers that are multiplying together with an a. So 3 is going to equal negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 times a. And this one last step here will prove that a will equal 3 divided by negative 4 or negative 3 over 4. And this is great because now we can put this a value back into our original equation. So we're going to substitute that back into the original equation and then get it into standard form. So we have f at x equals a, which is negative 3 fourths, bracket x minus 2, x plus 2. Uh, we will foil this out here, so negative 3 fourths can stay here for now. We have x squared, uh, the negative 2x and the positive 2x will cancel, so then we're just left with minus 4, it's a difference of squares. We will then multiply this through, so we have negative 3x squared over 4, and then negative 3 fourths times negative 4 is positive 3. And here we have our f at x equals negative 3 fourths x squared plus 3. And for uh, quadratic, it's OK to leave a fraction here as our a value. We're now going to go through an application problem. And in this problem, we're going to need to determine an equation of a quadratic function. The problem reads like this. A parabolic opening to a tunnel is 32 meters wide, measured from side to side along the ground. At the points that are 4 meters from either end, the tunnel entrance is 6 meters high. So let's first sketch a diagram of what this will look like. We'll then try to determine the equation of that function. And then we're going to try to solve what the maximum height of the tunnel is to the nearest tenth of a meter. The first step here is to sketch what this will look like. So the easiest way using our grid is to assume that the x-axis is the ground. So our tunnel will be all over top of the ground here. And there's two different theories on how you can draw the parabola. You can either use the axis of symmetry to act as the middle of your parabola, and then you'll just draw your parabola sort of up like this, where it looks uh, where that y-axis is the mirror image or the middle. That's one option. Or your other option is you can start with one end of your parabola on the origin and then just draw your parabola from there, landing somewhere else on the x-axis. Either one of those methods will help you solve for the maximum height, and they're both acceptable ways to draw your parabola on the grid. But if I were to answer the problem, I would prefer that my parabola is centered around the origin. This is going to make life a little bit easier when we need to determine certain numbers as the axis of symmetry is right where x equals 0. We're also told that this parabolic opening is 32 meters wide, which means the distance from one end to the other is 32 meters. From that information, we should be able to judge what these points are right here, or what our roots are. We know it's 32 meters from end to end, or in other words, 16 meters from the middle to an end. So this value here has to be 16, and this value here has to be negative 16 on our scale. Our vertex is going to be right up here in the middle, and we don't know what the height is yet, but we do know the x value of that vertex is going to be 0. So I'm going to write a zero there, and I'm just going to write an h here to represent height. We're not going to call this the y-axis, we're going to call this the h-axis, and I'm going to call it h at x, where x is the horizontal distance along the ground. 
Now we're also given a, a bit more information. We're told that at the points that are four meters from either end, so four meters in from here or four meters in from here, we have a height of six meters for our tunnel. So what that means is we can draw a point here and a point here, both of them four meters away from the end. So this would be at 12 and this would be at negative 12, four meters from those ends. And we know it's six meters high, so I'm going to put a little six on our scale here. And I'm going to write these labels for points. So this is the point 12, 6, and this would be the point negative 12, 6. If we'd like to come up with an equation of this parabola, we're going to use the same method that we had used previously. We're going to use our factored form equation to come up with uh, the skeleton of what this will look like. So h at x will equal a times x minus r times x minus s. Where we know that we can look at our roots based on this, uh, this form of the quadratic. Our roots are positive 16 and negative 16. So when we write our factored form here, we can say x minus 16 and x plus 16. And I'm going to keep putting this h at x here. Remember that h at x is similar to what y would be in all of our points. So if I were to read this point, 12, 6, 12 is the x value, 6 is the h value or the h at x value. Well, now we're going to use one of our other points other than the roots. Know that you can't use the roots as the point you're going to sub in to solve for a. Uh, everything will fall apart because the roots, if you plug in, let's say, a 16 or a negative 16 in for x, one of these brackets will turn into a 0, and then this a will multiply to a 0 and just disappear, which is not what we want. So you can't pick the roots to be the point you're going to sub in. But we can pick another point. So we have this 12, 6 point, and we have this negative 12, 6 point. I myself like to work with positive numbers. I guess I'm just a positive person. So we're going to use 12, 6 to sub in. 12 for x, 6 for h. So we're going to put the 6 in where h goes, and we're going to put the 12 in where x goes. So let's draw that out here. 6 equals a times, and then we'll put our brackets here, negative 16, positive 16, and our values of 12 here for x. And let's work this out. So we get 6 equals a times 12 minus 16 is negative 4. 12 plus 16 is 28. We're going to do a little bit of math here. So negative 4 multiplied by 28 happens to equal negative 112. So 6 is going to equal a times negative 112. And now if we divide that, we're going to keep this as a fraction here. So a is going to equal 6 over negative 112. Or if that's reduced, we'll divide all these things by 2. So that's going to be negative 3 over, and what is this, 56. So negative 3 over 56. That is our a value. Okay, so let's finish up our equation here by now writing in our a value. So negative 3 over 56, bracket x minus 16, x plus 16. We weren't told that this had to be in standard form, so we're just going to leave it in factored form uh, just like this. So this is our final equation here. I'm going to put it in nice sparkles so we can see. The last part of our question asked us to solve for what the height would be at the vertex. So we know that the height or the vertex happens when x equals 0. Remember this is the point 0 here. So we can use our function here. What is the height when x is 0? So h at 0. We're going to plug that in. So we get negative 3 over 56. Plug in a 0 here. So 0 minus 16. 0 plus 16. 16 times negative 16 times negative 3 over 56. Let's write that out here. 
remembering that we can round this to the nearest tenth. So let's pull up our trusty calculator here. So we have uh, 16 multiplied by negative 16. And then we're also going to multiply by negative 3 and then divide by 56. And then divide by 56 equals 13.714. And of course, we're rounding this to the nearest tenth. So 13.7. So our height is going to be 13.7 meters. And we're approximating here, so we're going to put a dot. So this is just one example of an application problem. You could see where you need to solve or find the equation of a parabola, given the roots, and then use that equation to answer a problem. In order to answer these questions, we will always need our two roots and at least one other point to work with. And remember that third point cannot be one of the two original roots. It just won't work out.